In this video, we'll look at Select. So this is the Google Cloud Platform for BigQuery and I have the editor open on the right hand side. So let's zoom in and here the first statement we'll write with select is select you specify so select what it does is it selects a column from a table and displays in the output if we do not have a table then we can use select to create like a transient or temporary table and here we'll create such a ta table transient table you can say uh, we are not necessarily creating a table but uh, to help it easier to understand uh, let's say we are creating a column with a value of one and labeling that as so we can specify as and here we can give this column name uh, let's call it number and the query has to end with a semicolon so we specify a semicolon at the end of it now the way we can write this it is not case sensitive so select could have been this could have been slower case but uh, what i've seen is it improves the readability of the code if we have all the uh, clauses written as capital case such as shown here and then the column names or the fields listed as either lower case or sentence case now if when we run this query so different ways we can run it if either we can just click on run and the query will run to show us the output down here in the results section here we see a column is created and it has just one value which is one other way to run the same query is by selecting this and then clicking on run so what that does is runs only the query that was selected again uh, we would get the same output that we see down here the, re the uh, reason why selecting the query and running it can be helpful is let's say if we had multiple queries on the same in the same notebook then we could select and choose which one we want to run we could run this one and in now we would see the output only of the second query and the first query is never run so we just have the output of two now here if we do not uh, select a query and simply click on run it will run all the queries that are present in that particular notebook okay and next thing to remember is that the semicolon is important to specify end of an existing query if we remove this semicolon then it throw we see that it is giving us an warning sign an error expected end of input but got a keyword select so here it is expecting a semicolon and uh, that's the right format to uh, write the query so that's a simple way to write a query and what we can do now is we'll add more than one column because we cannot create a table what we are going to do is we are going to write this in a select for select statement itself so let's say we write select and we create a, a, a value apple and name it as fruit so this is the column name and then we specify a comma and after specifying comma we can specify another value in this case it's spinach and we can specify the name for this let's call it vegetable and a semicolon so this is in this case now we are creating two columns and the first column has a value of apple the second column has a value of spinach now again to improve the readability of the code instead of writing this in one line I would suggest writing this on a separate line and giving it a tab like this so it tells us that there are two columns right away and the semicolon can come down at the very last line so this is this format feels like it's more readable again in the queries that you may have seen there is different convention there are different styles depends on what you like 
sometimes you'll see queries written with a comma written in front instead of writing it at the end of a line. And this helps if you want to comment out a single line, you could do that. But uh, I prefer writing the commas at the end of the line and uh, that works just as well. In this case now we have created these two. Let's try to run these and see what output we get. It should have two columns in the output with one row and as we should see now the fruit column should have the value of apple vegetable column does have the value of spinach so that's good while we are working at this there is another command called select star and you may have heard about it the so it's select star and we'll use this now because we do not have a table existing table to use and we haven't fetched anything from the public data sets what we are going to do is uh, we are going to step a uh, 10 step ahead just to look at one statement which is called width and the only thing to remember with this statement for now is that we are creating a transient table that uh, expires after the query run is completed okay so if we say the word width and then specify name of the table let's say we can label this as produce and specify the word as and then open close parenthesis and put all of this information from this select inside of it now what this does is when we run the query it creates uh, think of it as creating a transient table that has a name produce and it has two columns fruit and vegetable in the fruit column the value is apple in the vegetable column the value is spinach now with this table we, if we reference this table then we do not need any other tables either from the database or public data sets uh, this is a very simple transient table and we, which it makes it easier to learn the concepts in these uh, SQL clauses that we have for BigQuery. So what we can now do is run select star. Select star, what star does is it, uh, it outputs all the columns or all the fields in the table that we are referencing and the way we reference a table is below select we specify the word from and here we give the table name so the transient table name that we have is produce so what these two lines would do is it would select star would pull all the columns from the table produce and it will also if because we are not specifying how many rows we want in the output by default all the rows would be written so uh, as a uh, tip we need to specify we don't need to specify what we'll specify we can specify the limit in this case it does not make sense to specify the limit because we just have one row but let's say we have a data set or a table that has a thousand rows um, you can pull only maybe the 10 rows from the top to help expedite your learning process and uh, it also minimizes the memory consumption because i'm uh, not pulling all the data from the databases so with this then when we run this query if i click on run we should see a table uh, we should see an output that looks like a table uh, with two columns fruit and vegetables uh, with values apple and spinach okay so that's how the select star works now the next thing that we can do is write another select statement here where we can specify the name of fruit and to do that we can write it down here one thing that can be done is we can comment this out so uh, note that in sql for commenting we put a slash and then a star and then a star and slash so this would be the multi-line comment 
and as you've seen up above this is uh, just a, a pound sign which is uh, a single line comment now what we can do is specify the column names in this new select statement so we can type select and on a new line fruit that's the first column and vegetable that's the second column and it automatically took the table name there but we do not need that for now we'll just put vegetable we don't need the comma enter and here we can specify which table this is from and this is from the table that is are transiently being created here which is uh, produce and we specify that name so the output of this statement should be the same as we had earlier so when we click on run uh, we should see that uh, in the output there should be two columns yes there are fruit and vegetable and each column has the values that were associated with it which is apple and spinach there is a third variation to this so let's add uh, options or so this is option one and below this then let's comment this out as well because we are going to write another query right below it option two this is option two maybe put a hyphen there this is option two and below this this is option three now option three and here what we are going to do is use alias so sometimes what will happen is the name of the table that you have can be pretty long so you'll have to have uh, uh, maybe something like a project name you'll have a project name then dot it with uh, the database name or the data set name and then dot it with the table name so it becomes a long list of names and to avoid use of these uh, repeated use of these long list of names we can simply replace that by a small single letter and we'll see how that it that works so let's say we uh, use the same setup i need to comment this out okay now if you use the same uh, table select and we specify the fruit as our first column and vegetable as our second column then below that we can specify the column name as before but instead of specifying uh, produce we are going to use alias so we'll use from produce specify as and let's call this p now what we can do is specify the p right here and put a dot and then specify p right here and put a dot okay and if we run this this will give us the same output as before what we are doing here is if there were a need to reduce this name to a single letter we can do that and then we can use that name here and dot it with this uh, column name and we get the same output now the reason why we did this p dot is because if you had multiple tables so queries as you start learning you'll see that uh, this from statement can have more than one tables and so it helps uh, to uh, sometimes it helps to improve the readability of the code we specify which table that column is coming from so we specify the name of the table and dot uh, the name of the column from that table so this is equivalent to let's say let's comment this out further and so let's comment this out and we have option four now in option four it's the same setup so i'm going to copy all of this down below and here instead of uh, because we used alias alternatively we could have used the entire name of the entire name of the table there and we don't need the alias here so this is equally good so if we run this query uh, we would still get the same output that we had before so uh, that's how select works in sql and in bigquery sql right here
uh, we have a single select which is single select star we can specify column names we can specify column names dotted with complete or uh, table name or we can specify column names dotted with only the uh, alias of a table name that was it then for this video i hope you enjoyed this video writing your first query if you have any comments or suggestions please let me know in the comment section below please like share and subscribe it helps me stay motivated to create more content for you all thank you and see you in the next video